Good morning everybody, Tyler here with Boost Junkie Media and today, as you can see, we've got the S550 up on the lift. Um, I've got a couple of axles that we're going to put in this thing, it still has the stock axles in it right now. I've got uh, some DSS 800s, we're going to go ahead and throw in this thing, we're going to the track this weekend, weather's looking good, so I don't see any reason why the track shouldn't happen. And we're going to see what it does, just for a little extra comfort, we're going to go ahead and just throw the axles in it. I don't think it would have broke the stock axles unless it wheel hopped or something crazy. Um, but since I've got the axles, it's not that hard to swap them. I figured, why not? Let's just go ahead and swap them out. Um, so with that, stay tuned. We're going to kind of check out a little time lapse and see what's going on with that. Okay, so what we've done here, guys, is uh, the way I always kind of do these axles on these cars is you can remove the whole hub if you want to take you know all the mounting points here, all the mounting points here off. Just take the whole hub out, and you've got free access to the axle. Um, what I'm going to try to do is just remove everything at the top and just fold like fold everything down. I'm hoping that with folding everything down, I'm pretty sure I've done it this way last time in the orange car. If I fold everything down. I think I'll be able to squeeze and see, I've already got the, the nut off the axle. I think I'll be able to shove that through all the way and, and then we can grab the axle and yank on it a few times and hopefully it'll come out. So basically what you kind of saw what I did there is I took all of the upper bolts out, I took out, took off the caliper and took off the tow rod connection here. And as you can see what it does is it allows the whole assembly to kind of pivot down. And as it pivots down, you can kind of push your thumb through here and push the axle out of the splines here. And then that can just kind of hang like that, that doesn't hurt it. And then you saw what I did, you just kind of grab the axle, and you kind of give it a couple of big pops, and out it comes. Uh, in theory. Now, on the orange car that I had, um, the, the, the passenger side came out okay. On the driver's side, I had a heck of a time getting it out. So I don't know what was up with that, but hopefully this car does not fight me like that. So... Um, so there's our, uh, the old one's out, 
and I just had to grab my new ones out of the attic area. Uh, they're they're new. To, they're not new new. They're they were used on the other car, but they're going to be better than the stoppers. So uh, next step is going to be to throw those in. So yeah. All right, here we go. So we've got the new axle. We got it all cleaned up, and we're going to go ahead and take that in, and we're just going to fish it through here. Move that up out of the way. Fish it through. Housing. And then we'll let that lay there for just a minute. We're going to go under here. Make sure that it's up where it needs to go. It is. And then we're going to just kind of get it in there like that. And that should be all it needs. Okay, so now we're gonna dip the tip of this back down into here. Okay, then what we're going to do is go ahead and remove this last bolt over here. Okay, and the whole hub assembly is going to fall down. Right here, uh, I've got a little bit of grease on my finger, and I'm just very um, carefully kind of putting it on the splines of the axles just to help them slide through the uh, hub. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I have grabbed the hub and I'm putting it back up on the car. I'm attaching it at the bottom and at the same time that I attached it at the bottom, I also slid the axle splines through the center of it and then put the axle nut on to keep it from coming off. Okay, so right here what I'm doing is I've got the axle back in and I've got the hub up and connected and I'm just going through uh, putting all the bolts back in, uh, getting them snug and making sure that everything is fitting and everything looks good. Okay, so basically putting it back together just like taking it apart. And what we're going to do is before I get this side completely done, I just want to make sure that the other side is not going to fight me any. So I'm going to go ahead and stop with this side right here and go ahead and jump to the other side. And take it apart, at least through the part where the axle comes out. Once the axle comes out, then we're in the clear. I just want to make sure the other side is not going to fight me with the whole axle thing. I don't think it will, but you never know. So that's what we're gonna do. All right guys, welcome back. And so now we, uh, we did the other side. The other side went ahead and popped out just like it should. We went ahead and started putting the other side back together. I'm at the point now where I only have one screw jack. I wanted to get this side button back up for the most part. So we're back over here on this side. Um, 
So what we're doing right now is you can see we've got the hub back up and in place from earlier. We've got most of our bolts here started already. Um, just realized I made a, a slight boo-boo, so we're going to have to bring the screw jack back down. Um, but once we get everything back started, then what we are doing with the screw jack is it's always best to tighten all your suspension bolts with a load on the suspension, just like as if the car was on the ground. Well, since I don't have a pit and that's a little bit of a pain, what I tend to do is put a screw jack underneath the lower control arm, the lower cradle, and I screw it up until I see that there's just a little bit of tension being taken off of the pad here on the lift. Once I know that, I can see that the spring in here is compressed and I know that there's a, a load on the suspension of the, on the car. Once I see that load of the suspension on the car, I know that it, that's just like as if the car was on the ground. So then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten everything down. Um, and then I always use a marker to go through the bolts as I torque them. And I, I put a line, I put a mark on them, something, just so that I know that that bolt has been torqued. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and run the car back up. And as you're doing this, you want to make sure you're not pinching anything. Brake lines, brake caliper, none of that stuff. Make sure you're not pinching anything in the suspension. And we're also keeping an eye on our mounting pad here on the lift. And you'll see it. You'll see when it starts to lift up off the pad. Okay, there it is. So then I come down just a touch. And at that point, we're ready to torque. So we're going to go with our lower control arm here. This bad boy is 203. There we go. Double confirm. Okay, he's good. So I'm going to put a line on the bolt. Okay. Now we're going to go over here to our outer tie, uh, toe rod. Okay, toe rod outer is 129. So, switch our thing. One twenty nine. Camber arm, camber arms and knuckle, 76, 76, so this one, we have to use a couple of ratchets. So that's everything. We've got everything torqued. So now we're going to go ahead and let this down. Take the weight off of the thing again. Just kind of make sure nothing's being pinched or whatever. And once that's all done, learn this the hard way. Take the screw jack out. Because you don't want to let the car down <laughs> with the screw jack under there. Ask me how I learned that. All right, now we are going to put the rest of it back together. So that means our rotors, our, our rotor on each side, our brake caliper, and all of our bracketry here can all go back.
And that is pretty much it. That is this whole side, everything's back together. We still have to torque this axle nut. Um, once we get the other side all finished back up, we'll go ahead and pull the e-brake to clamp this rotor down because it's wanting to spin. Um, and then we'll, we'll torque this to 150. But everything else is snug, everything else is tight. Um, everything looks good. So we'll have to finish up the other side and we'll be all done. Welcome back to the channel and as you can see, we are done. Um, yeah, so overall it's not too bad of a job. Um, just a little recap, I basically just undo all of the mounting points and then you can fold the hub assembly down to get to the axle. But honestly, it was a little bit of a pain trying to, when I put the new axle in, trying to get the new axle to go through the splines in the hub here, it was a little bit of a pain. So since I just had one more bolt at the bottom holding it, I just went ahead and took out that last final bolt and took the whole hub off. So that way you have free, open, easy access to making sure that you get the new axle in, you get it seated and everything. And then when you put the hub back on, you could just bring it straight in from the outside, get the splines on the axle to line up properly. And um, then you just put it all back together. Torque specs are, you know, I, I found them on Mustang 6G. Um, so that's probably one of your best places. Uh, BMR, especially if you have a lot of BMR stuff, I have a few items. Um, their site has torque specs for all of their products. So you can always go there. Um, but yeah, that is basically it. I did have to set the parking brake to be able to torque uh, the axle nut down. It was wanting to spin a little bit, uh, and that's normal. So I went ahead and set the parking brake after I got the calipers all put back on. Went ahead and uh, torqued this down and just kind of did it once final over. Everything looks good, everything's connected, everything's bolted. And now we're gonna go ahead and put the wheels back on. Our new axles are in. Everything went off fairly easy without a hitch. No super big, uh, you know, concerns or issues. Tires look good. So this is Friday, tomorrow, and Sunday. We are headed to the track uh, both days. One day we're going to take this. The other day we're going to take the Fox body, which I'm pointing over there because it's sitting over there. Um, so it should be a big, fun weekend of racing. Um, plans for this, hopes for this is low tens, you know, 10 teen, 10 20, something like that, hopefully. Um, would be freaking awesome as it sits. And then for the Fox, you know, last time out, uh, I don't know if I've, if you've seen the video yet. Uh, you might've well, about the Fox, but the last time out, it went 914 at 149. Um, we are gonna do some things this weekend to try to get that eight out of it. We're gonna bump the boost up a little bit on the leave, RPM up a little bit on the leave and a little bit more boost further down track. Um, see if we can't get it into the eights, you know, 880s, 890s, probably somewhere in there. So that's what's coming up this weekend. There will be videos. So I'm gonna try to do as much video as I can on both of the cars this weekend. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the for this video. Uh, give me a subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. Uh, and this is a little bit more hands-on, you know, technical, like actually kind of seeing some of the stuff I'm doing. Um, than what I sometimes do, but I didn't know if there was any real great videos out there. I thought maybe kind of talking about this would make people a little more apt to want to try it themselves. Um, if you like this kind of content, give me a subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and leave me a comment. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, and there's going to be more content to come. All right, guys? We'll see you later. Keep it boosted. Keep it boosted.